Hi, I'm Dr. Krupka, and you're about to watch our gastrointestinal dysfunction video. Uh, hopefully you've made it through the gastrointestinal physiology video. That'll give you the background to understand what we're talking about here. And in this video, we're going to talk about how things go wrong in your gastrointestinal tract. We'll be talking about heartburn and indigestion, dysbiosis, leaky gut, food allergies and sensitivities, and even uh, some theories on how autoimmune issues begin. So stick with me. First of all, heartburn and indigestion. Understand your stomach produces acid and your pancreas produces enzymes. Enzymes are not acidic, by the way. Uh, pancreatic production can be decreased when you're under stress or if you have adrenal issues, if you've got certain viruses, you can be overburdened by an improper diet, which one of us doesn't have that from time to time. But all of those things can slow down your pancreas's ability to produce enzymes and therefore force your stomach to overproduce acid to try to compensate that so that it can digest your food. Now, with decreased pancreatic production, the stomach over to, overproduces the acid, you get maldigestion, meaning you don't digest your food appropriately. Uh, you can get belching, gas, even reflux. So this is one of the ways that GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, happens. Now, think about this for a minute. If your approach is to get rid of the acid, and you made too much acid because you had already gotten rid of the enzymes, what do you have left to, to digest your food? Right now you, you didn't have enzymes, so you made too much acid, now you got rid of the acid, now you've got nothing. So I'm not quite sure how you digest your food, um, but that's, that's another lecture. Now, dysbiosis. Uh, we mentioned before in the physiology lecture, dysbiosis was not having the appropriate uh, bacteria living in your digestive tract. Uh, not enough of the good bacteria, too much of the bad. I usually use an analogy in the office of a front yard where you have too many weeds and not enough grass. You want to have a nice lush lawn in your front yard. Yes, you're always going to have some weeds, but if the lawn is thick and healthy enough, no one will notice the weeds. Well, if your ratio of weeds to lawn gets out of control, you've got dysbiosis. Uh, it can also be caused by other infections or infestations, yeast, fungi, parasites, uh, something like H. pylori, which is the bacteria that causes ulcers. Um, lots of opportunity there for, for dysbiosis to begin. Uh, and poor digestion in the stomach can lead to this. If you don't digest your food well in the stomach, it doesn't come out as processed as it should. Uh, and that can change the environment farther down in the digestive tract. Uh, and having the incorrect diet, uh, not putting the right food in to feed the bacteria in the digestive tract. And if you have dysbiosis, it can lead to most of the other issues we're going to talk about in the rest of this presentation, so very critical. Leaky gut, uh, increased permeability at the intestinal border. Understand this, your, the border of your intestinal tract what separates basically your poop from your blood, right? That's a border. And its job is to allow nutrients in, but keep all the bad stuff out. So it has to be what we call a semi-permeable membrane. Well, if that becomes too permeable, then you start letting all the trash straight into your bloodstream. Uh, and it can allow, as it says here, undigested proteins and toxins to enter the bloodstream. Now this activates the immune system, and we now know how much of your immune system is there. Right, Near, Nearly 75% of your immune system surrounds the digestive tract. Um, that increases the demands on the liver and the kidneys because of all the toxins coming in. It introduces pathogens or uh, bacteria, yeast, fungus, parasites into the bloodstream generally bad stuff. It can lead to ADD and ADHD, inflammatory issues, food allergies and sensitivities, and even autoimmune issues. So leaky gut, not good. Now we're going to take a look at, at how leaky gut happens for those of you that are more visual. Uh, this is a diagram. I'm going to move my mouse around a little bit so that you can see things here. Uh, this is the intestinal lumen. This is where your, your stool is. This is your bloodstream. That's where the nutrients are trying to get to. And these cells right here are your border cells in your intestinal tract. Now, what I want you to notice is where that circle is right there, or that ellipse, 
That is what we call a tight junction. That's where those cells are nicely butted up against each other, and they're held together well. Nothing can get through there. But when you have a situation where you have dysbiosis, you're eating foods you're allergic to, uh, you've got an infection of some sort, you start to develop this situation. Now, these cells are not close enough together to act as a real border, and anything that exists in the intestinal lumen can float directly into your bloodstream. That's not a good thing, right? That's what's going to start activating your immune system. You can also get, in your digestive tract, food allergies and sensitivities. Now, there are a lot of technical definitions of allergy versus sensitivity. We're not going to get into all that here. That's why you'll just see me list both of them each time I talk about it. Partially digested food makes it through the gut barrier. We just saw mechanically how that can happen in the last slide. These proteins are presented to the immune system. Those are called antigens. Your immune system creates antibodies specifically to fight these antigens. Now, every time you consume these foods, you present those proteins, you activate your immune system to try to fight them. You can create IgE antibodies, which is technically called a food allergy. And you can create other antibodies, for example, IgG or IgA antibodies. Those tend to be called food sensitivities. Mechanically, they basically work the same way. Uh, they have different rates at which they inflame your system. Um, but essentially, you can think of them as one and the same. They're just different antibodies. Now, autoimmune issues. This is a prevailing theory. Uh, especially among functional medicine practitioners. And there's a reason why it's a prevailing theory, mainly because it appears to be correct. Um, but through the same mechanisms as leaky gut, proteins are presented to your immune system, and you react to them. But we only have a certain number of amino acids to work with when we build proteins. I tell patients, think of these like different colored Lego blocks. Eventually, if the same color sequence from your food proteins shows up in any of your resident body proteins, you now have what's called molecular mimicry, where the proteins coming through have the same amino acid sequence as the proteins in your body. Now, those immune cells that have been targeted toward the proteins coming in through your diet can also attack the proteins that exist in your body. When this relationship occurs, you develop immune reactions against your own tissues. That's called an autoimmune disease. And as long as you continue presenting these proteins to the immune system, you will continue to make antibodies that attack your own tissues. All right, this is an important concept to understand for those of you dealing with autoimmune problems. You likely have some sort of underlying gut issue that needs to be resolved. Now, that does it for intestinal dysfunction. Yes, there are other things can go, that can go wrong, but that gives you a general idea of the main categories of problems that we deal with in the office on a regular basis. Our contact information is here, as you can see. drkrupka.com is the website. We appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next video.